just I want to like kind of get a feel of uh, you know where you guys are in the audience. Um, how many of you guys are seniors? Almost everybody. Juniors? Great. Anybody younger than a junior? One. <laughs> Excellent. Give this man a bagel or something. <laughs> so, um, as I was introduced, uh, I'm Nick Kwiatkowski. I work for Michigan State University Telecommunications Systems. So we are actually the uh, provider of telecommunication systems here on campus. We provide the cable TV system infrastructure. All right, there we go. Yes, we provide the uh, cable TV infrastructure, the telephone infrastructure, the fiber optics on campus, the radio, uh, radio systems, and also the RF, uh, cellular systems. So we do all the microwave dishes on campus, uh, satellite dishes, um, and we work with all the cell phone vendors to make sure that you actually have coverage on campus as well. How many people here have uh, an AT&T phone? Is, do you have service right now? Probably not, maybe, kinda, <laughs> sorta. It's on the third floor or Five fourth bar. floor. Five bars, oh. So we're actually, you know, right now we're actually in a project with AT&T. Uh, actually, I think we have guys coming in this week. So they're probably in the building right now putting up antennas in this building, which we did the RF engineering for. So a um, couple other things I want to mention as well. Definitely listen to what Brian said here a couple minutes ago. His, uh, if somebody had told me what he said a couple, I mean, a few years ago, would have been invaluable. But so this is what we kind of do. Um, see here. We employ people from all sorts of backgrounds in lots and lots of different uh, areas. Uh, we have technicians. So we actually have the guys who actually turn the screws, do the programming, all that type of stuff. We do almost all this work in-house. We run a phone system that has about 15,000 endpoints, all voice over IP. We have a, tel a cable television infrastructure that actually has about 13,500 outlets. So we run lots and lots of equipment for that. Um, our radio system, we have 800 radios out there that run, you know, pretty much are connected to pretty much fit every physical plant employee, which gives us about a 40 mile radius, but also works in the steam tunnels, places where the cellular just does not work. Uh, we have engineers, like I said, uh, for RF engineering, so we actually do a lot of math and a lot of engineering that way. Uh, a lot of planning, all that type of stuff, and of course we have accountants, uh, clerical, all that type of stuff in our department as well. Another very important aspect of our department is the engineering, or is the uh, planning and analysts. We actually do all the telecommunications planning. So if we actually have to have the foresight in our department to realize that, oh, voice over IP is gonna be a big thing. Well, people are, planning, are gonna be planning to use Skype and how can we integrate with that, you know, with our phone system and things like that. So I was asked to answer a couple of questions about, you know, how we do our hiring, all that type of stuff uh, for our department. Pretty much the two things that you're gonna find, you know, in our field and just, you know, when we're doing hiring in general, is we are, we wanna hire people that have expertise in the skill and have experience in the skill. The two are not the same. You can build on both. Also, you know, general uh, technical competency as well. So I'm gonna talk about each of these here. So as far as skill goes, you know, pretty much every technical position that we have out there requires computer knowledge. You know, particularly in our department in the telecommunications world, everything is going over TCP IP. You guys are very lucky nowadays that you actually grew up with TCP IP. We have a lot of people who have been in the industry for years and years. This is something new that they have to learn, something that they have to accommodate in their uh, knowledge base. And it is very complicated. Pick up the books, go to the library, pick up books on how TCP IP works, basic networking, all that type of stuff. Um, more of the technician positions, a lot of the technical uh, positions that we have, pretty much everything, like I said, goes over IP nowadays. Learn, you know, what voice over IP is. Learn video over IP. Learn, you know, TCP IP troubleshooting. You know, know what the OSI level is, uh, layers are, and things like that. Unfortunately, this is not a whole lot what, our, um, what the telecommunications department is really focusing on right now. They're giving you a lot of the background knowledge, a lot of things to let you learn these things. But you really have to pick up the books and really have to get the knowledge yourself. 
The planner positions, of course, are, pro are trained more towards uh, product knowledge, networking interactions, and things like that. How many, pe how many people here have ever heard of unified communications? I was hoping for at least a few people. This is a word that's been on the cover of every CIO magazine, every Voice of IP magazine out there in the last year and a half. You can't pick up a technical trade magazine without hearing about it. You guys really need to get into this stuff. And if you are you know, really conscious about this, you can put this on your resume, figure out what it is, and actually have an intelligent conversation about it. Guess what, you're three steps ahead of even the guy who got laid off from AT&T you know, two years ago. Experience. Experience is something that's very, very hard to present to potential employers. Sure, you have a resume, sure you have a cover letter, you've got that 30 second interview over the phone, but how do you really convey what you really learned about, what you've actually done in the industry? If you guys are graduating from college right now, you're probably not gonna have a whole lot of experience. However, you can build these things up, and you can do it without a whole lot of, you know, dollars, act or, you know, you do need to put effort into it, let's put it that way. Get internships. I would rather see somebody uh, work at a small company making $9 an hour, actually turning screws, being an intern for a network engineer, than I would working for, sorry to say, but for IBM, making $18 an hour, you know, being an intern as a coffee getter or something like that. Getting great experience actually working on this stuff and being able to talk about this stuff intelligently is important. Play with this stuff. You guys right now are, you know, of course in college, you have access to lots and lots and lots of resources. Make use of them. When you're in your dorm or if you're in your apartment, download, uh, there's an open source project called Asterisk. It's a phone system, it's free. Just playing around with it, installing it, figuring out how a phone system works will make you more employable as soon as you walk in the door if you're looking for, you know, a position as a planner or as a technician or somebody just dealing with telecommunications in general. Knowing the terms of what, a T, uh, of what a T1 actually means makes you more employable to a place like Global Crossing, to, to a place like IBM, because you can talk about that stuff intelligently. You don't have to know everything about it. You don't have to even make the thing work. But you need to be able to talk intelligently and figure out what the stuff is and know where to go for the resources, which you're gonna get when you play with this stuff.